delighted 4x4 fans, David Wilson here with you in sunny New Zealand, except maybe not quite so sunny. It looks good. It's going to be a great day. I'm in New Zealand to celebrate the launch of Jeep's new Gladiator. Now, in issue 9, Steen, our illustrious editor, revealed the Wrangler Rubicon. He said it was the best four-wheel drive he's ever driven. I had it for a couple of days and I thought it was pretty good. Just recently in issue 10, I reviewed the short wheelbase Wrangler Overland, and that was a great car. Fantastic traction control, but being short wheelbase, not enough space for me. So I was craving a ute, and guess what? Santa has bought me one. Come down here, have a look at this. The new Jeep Gladiator, and it's in my favorite current color, Hemi Orange. Actually, I'm not quite sure what the color is called, but it looks resplendent in this fantastic orange paintwork. And today we're gonna go put it to the test properly off-road. Big boulders, raging streams, I can't wait to get stuck into it. So more coming up in just a sec. Four by four fans, I've got the illustrious Mr. Ian Curry alongside me. He's a scribe for News Corporation, does a lot of their motoring work for them, and he's been out on tons of Isuzu gigs with me. Ian, it's great to be with you once more. Great to be here, Dave. He's it's sitting alongside <laughs> the expert. <laughs> it's uh, almost like the A team uh, once more back together again. Oh, I didn't want to say that. Yeah, that's a few incest. Yeah. Now, why are we here in New Zealand, of all places? Well, wow, it's the cheap gladiator, isn't it? Yeah. And, uh, it's a pretty rough and ready rugged country and um, I guess that's the ideal place to launch it, a vehicle like this. It is. I, I think Jeep internationally, um, because folk are coming in from all over the world to participate in this event during the course of a week, I think they've picked an amazing place to do it. I mean right now we're driving down this dusty road with a dozen, 14 gladiators in front of us and there's these snow-capped peaks, these beautiful pine trees, all this farm wilderness. It's an astonishing place. Uh, unfortunately beset with a lot of wet weather in the days leading up to our event, um, which put the brakes on uh, the earlier group, but it hasn't really held us up, has it? Oh, I think that's the whole point of these Jeeps. If you, I think Jeep play on that as well. You choose your adventure, and if you get stuck with stuff like uh, flooding and rocks across the path, I think they, they, it's fine. We just find a, an alternative route. Or just going. drive straight over the top of them. Try their best. Yeah. yeah. Certainly fording uh, rivers and flooded roads is, has been no problem whatsoever. So, yeah. Um, it's kind of added to the, the Jeep adventure experience. Correct. And today we've got the promise of doing some serials off road, which we're both looking forward to because we haven't had a lot so far. It's been mostly bitumen road running and a lot of dirt road running. And I, I might just ask you, because you're the, the serious uh, uh, wheel turner when it comes to going fast in exotic cars, how would you rate the handling dynamics on road of the Gladiator? Well, I suppose, as with every dual cab you, there's limitations, of course. Um, so for such a, a popular vehicle segment now, um, you, you've got to have one eye on Yeah, it has to be a seriously competent off-road, but yeah, on-road as well. You've got to live with it day to day. So many people use it as day to day transport. Yeah. And this Gladiator, as I say, it's a, a good 20, 30 centimetres longer than most dual cab use. Yep. Um, whether that's helping the on-road, I'm not sure, but I'd love to test it alongside some of our market leaders like the Ranger and the, the Hilux on-road. Um, Certainly, it's it's we've not been sat here complaining. No, much no, in it's fact, not bouncing around. We've we've swapped notes about how composed it's been on, on all sorts of surfaces. There was only a couple of times on some choppy bitumen where it started to get a bit of a porpoise going. Indeed, but yeah. for the most part, it's been really good. And of course, when we chucked the wombat test at it. It hung on like grim death, didn't the, it? The David Wilson Wombat test <laughs> <laughs> was not pre-approved. It's just like hang on to something. Yeah, yeah. But, but anyway, no, no big oversteer moments, no understeer all. moments. So not bad for a vehicle that's running what truck all terrain tyres. Yeah, I'd, I'd say I'd be totally happy living with this day to day. Just apart from its size, of course. Yeah. If, if you're living with it in, in the town or the city, it's yeah. going to be a pain. Yeah. To park and manoeuvre, the turning circle is quite yeah. spectacularly barge-like. But yeah. you're buying it for the carrying potential. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. 
I'd say a lot of people will be using it in this sort of wilderness where the size doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Yeah. I'd say, what's the payload? 650 kilograms? It wasn't as much as we were hoping for. No, I'd say. Um, and I had a bit of a chat to the engineers yesterday about whether there'd be some sort of upgrade on right. that. And they were playing a bit coy on it, so maybe the aftermarket might have to pick that one up and uh, come up with spring rates that might carry a bit more load. Indeed. Because it looks like the chassis is up for it, because that's massive underneath the car. What I would say is if, much like other dual cabinets, once you do throw a few hundred kilograms in the back, it, it normally settles things even more. Yeah. And I'd say this, this would be exactly the same. So I don't know if, if tradies, for example, would be in a gladiator where they'll be throwing in the, the mulch and the, the worksite crap, yep. or if it is just going to be for your, your trail bikes yep. and, and that sort of kit. So maybe say it's more lifestyle. Yeah, maybe if you're a chippy, you'd have it in a, a trailer type behind you. Maybe keep some lighter stuff in the back of the unit. Yeah, all right. Well, we look forward to our off road segment. Oh, you can do that, man. You're the expert. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Sam. Thank you. New Zealand, it is epic, it is huge. Look at this landscape around me and it's made all the better with the new Jeep Gladiator. Now I started my day in a Rubicon back there, finished up in the Overland and I have to tell you, the Overland has gone everywhere the Rubicon went, despite the fact that it hasn't got the double diff locks and it's got the passenger car tires. But it is a great truck, traction control tuned up a treat, walked over the lumps and bumps easy peasy. It's a great machine and I can't wait to get it back home to Australia, up in the Flinders Ranges, going up in our desert country and up those scrabbly old loose Shelly Hills. It should be pretty epic. So keep an eye out for that one coming up soon. In the meantime, Jeep Gladiator, love your work. <laughs>